In 2011, there was this really important paper that was published. For the first time, they were able to show that CAT scanning, the people at the highest risk of having lung cancer, could actually save lives. The holy grail of cancer is to detect it fast enough so that it can be treated and have it never come back again. And so when we saw this, we said we have to start thinking about how to actually deliver the care. That's sort of how the idea was born, to put together the nodule clinic. I think also these are some of the hardest nodules, these small ones that are below the one centimeter threshold. One of the difficult things about current healthcare, if you had a CAT scan that was done 10 years ago, we don't get to see it. But for this clinic, we take the time before patients arrive. I know that you had your scan done recently here at Mass General. Have you ever had any other CAT scans done at any other hospitals? fantastic nurse, helps to gather all of the imaging that the patient has ever had. And then what we do is we bring all the specialists together in one room, medical oncology, radiation oncology, surgical oncology, thoracic radiology, and pulmonology, five disciplines that staff the clinic. We look all together as a team at the salient images that the radiologist has pulled out, and then we discuss the case. One of the five doctors acts as a representative. We bring patients in and we give them a combined opinion. Where we're paying attention to is on this right side here. What we're likely to recommend is that you have another follow-up scan, but instead of a six-month follow-up, we'll extend that to one year. I'm just gonna have you take a seat on the bench and I'm gonna listen to your lungs. Um, we'll get you scheduled for your next follow-up scan and then we'll bring you back to be seen in the clinic. What we hope to do is create a really fantastic experience for patients. They have a cohesive opinion and it saves them time because if you imagine what evaluation of a nodule is like for someone who isn't in the nodule clinic, it might involve you getting a CAT scan ordered by your primary care. You go back to your primary care doctor to discuss that scan. They send the patient to go see a pulmonologist. If you needed an interventional pulmonary procedure, you might then be sent to yet another person. And all of these different appointments could have a week, two weeks in between each of them. And it may not end there. All of that can be obviated with that one discussion that we have before a patient comes in. We've just saved the patient months of time and we diagnose and treat cancers earlier with the best possible therapies. That's from the patient side. There's so many other reasons to do this as well. As an MD-PhD, the thing I love most about my work is that it's so directly connected to patient care. When I see a patient in the clinic and it's a problem for which there are no good solutions, it really inspires me to go back to the lab and think, well, what can I do research-wise that can help improve the outcomes in my patient? And this is stained with PSMA, CD45 for the white blood cells. In contrast to lung cancer, we've had a blood test that allows for the early detection of prostate cancer, and we've had it for about three decades now. But what we're seeing in prostate cancer is the overdiagnosis of cancers that may not ever need to be treated. We don't have good tools to distinguish the indolent cancers from the aggressive cancers. We're working on identifying new biomarkers to distinguish those from the cancers that are aggressive. A huge focus of my research has been circulating tumor cells, rare tumor cells shed from primary tumors into the bloodstream that are very difficult to isolate. At MGH, we've had a multidisciplinary team, engineers, molecular biologists, and clinicians working together to develop a new device, a microfluidic chip that's able to very effectively and gently isolate these cells. When I see a patient with prostate cancer, the number one question that I get is, Doc, what would you do? You know, we're guided by all these, unfortunately, vague factors. We're moving away from this one-size-fits-all view of medicine. We're making gradual progress, and our hope is that eventually we'll have a whole suite of different molecular signatures that will point us to exactly the right therapy for the right patient. I love MGH because of the freedom that you have in this environment to create the best experience for patients. It was a very deliberate decision to put this clinic in the cancer center because not only do we think it's an engine or a platform for discovery, but operationally, the cancer center has been running multidisciplinary clinics for years. It's not just that there is a collection of experts in many different fields. It's that Mass General has this collaborative environment that doesn't exist at many other places. 
people aren't competing with each other. We're all willing to collaborate with each other and move towards the same goal together. We will increasingly, in healthcare, need to think of ways to streamline and make more efficient the care that we deliver. Healthcare is one of the hardest industries to change things in. That ability to reinvent yourself, to be creative in how you organize your research, your clinical care, those things are really truly what makes MGH special. If you can show its worth over time, then they'll put their resources behind making you and it successful.